Kia ora koutou. my name is Jessica and I am the Managing Director for the North Island at Ministry of Inspiration. Welcome to the talk today. The focus of this session is to show you how to use RoboCup Junior Theatre to support literacy, numeracy and local curriculum within your classroom. So what is RoboCup Junior Theatre? It's a national competition where your teams of three to four have to create a one to two minute dance or play where robots are the actors. The students or teacher uh, decide on the theme, which can be absolutely anything. The students then design the props, costumes and set, and then they code the robot to move autonomously. You can use any robots at all. Um, what we've got here are a couple of examples. Uh, so in this one here, we have uh, students who created a story about Ihinga, a famous Rotorua ancestor. Uh, they've dressed uh, to match what they're doing. They've got their wee board down here, robots set. Uh, this group here was from a holiday program, so it's a much smaller set one robot um, and they've got their information happening over here but have a look. It's just a much smaller area but the robot's working entirely autonomously. and they've worked towards a 30 second goal. Uh, this one over here is still in draft, but it's a local primary school. Uh, they created their own story and their own theme. They've got uh, two robots and they are the ones who are saying what the robots are saying. So they're acting out as well. So uh, through this uh, session, I'm going to take you through the process you and your students will go through to produce a RoboCup Junior Theatre entry. As I go, I'll highlight the literacy, numeracy and local curriculum links. So stage one is to create a compelling story. Uh, the first is, uh, this is our first link to the local curriculum. As a school or a teacher, you can guide and set the theme parameters. This is a great way to tell local stories, explore local science, art and culture from the tale of Hinemoa and Tutanakai through to um, the founding of New Zealand, anything that you like. Uh, once you have the theme, uh, the time comes to explore how to make good stories. I like to start with uh, reading a picture book that's got a twist. I recommend that is not a good idea by Mo Williams. I always stop just before the end and ask the students what they think is going to happen before revealing the twist. We can then talk about the twist, like what they were expecting, why they were expecting that, how interested and engaged they were. Uh, because this story has a lot of repetition in it, it's also really good time to talk about audience participation because they have started joining in. So you can talk about how that makes st the story more interesting and people want to know what's going to happen. Um, you can repeat this process with short videos like Marshmallows by uh, Kylie Poole and Partly Cloudy from Pixar. Both are available on uh, YouTube. 
Uh, if you stop at key points, you can ask them what they think is going to happen and why. You can also talk about their favourite movies and stories. Why are they good? Why are they interesting? Why do they want to watch them? Um, if you've got high school students or even uh, advanced intermediate, you can start talking about the hero's journey and um, how that follows through to make a compelling and interesting story. The next step is to have them come up with their own stories or if they're going to be retelling a story, uh, determining the key characters and the main points of that story. I highly recommend getting them to focus on just one theme or one point, whether it's their self-created or retelling. The more characters, the more complex the code and trying to get the robots to work together. So I recommend a maximum of one to two characters. Then I get them to create a quick storyboard of their story uh, using something like this, a story organizer. So look at how does the story start and how does it end. Push them for a compelling and interesting story. How can the audience be involved? How can the audience see what's happening without words because the robots can't talk? Now once the team have got an agreed story, you can then encourage each student to write their own narrative of the story. So you've got narrative writing. You can also have them write up what happens at each stage, so just the facts, um, which can become their procedural writing. And then you can also have teams rewrite the story as a script, including all the stage directions. Both those tasks, the procedural and the script, will help with the next step. But you can see stage one is a very heavy literacy space, but it's driven by what the students are going to be producing. So even your reluctant writers will be able to write about things, particularly if they start from the story organizer point. So the next step is to start working out where your robot or robots are going to move to and from while on the stage. For RoboCup Junior, the stage size is one meter by one meter, but you can restrict that down smaller if you prefer. I recommend using core flute, uh, that's what the real estate signs are made out of. If you get that for each team, um, tape them together to make up your 1.8. Uh, but then the teams can spray paint them, they can stick things on, they can draw on them. It makes things a lot uh, easier for them to produce the next steps. So once they get their space, they should quickly mark out where their props are going to go so they don't plan on running into them. Uh, then mark where the robot is starting from. From here, students should then write down every single movement in detail for both robots. So nowhere in their uh, pseudocode should it ever say, and then they dance, or then they fight. They need to say what they mean exactly by that. So they're coming in forwards, how far, go backwards, how far, turning, all those kinds of things. Um, sometimes it can really help to draw the route that the robot will take with a pencil. Um, in working through this step, the students need to understand how to use and read a ruler and or a measuring tape. And it's surprising how old students are who don't know how to do this. Uh, and then, of course, uh, using a protractor to read angles, as well as being able to convert between millimeters, centimeters, meters, use of decimals. So all of this section is quite heavy in numeracy. So your pseudocode should look something like this. Obviously, it's going to be a lot longer. Um, you can pre-teach the skills in terms of how to use protractors and things, and I totally recommend doing that uh, because often even high school students don't transfer the information that they've learned between subjects. In the next step, uh, once they've got that pseudocode, and I tell you, really, really make sure they do that because it makes this step go so much faster, they can start building and coding. These can go on concurrently and they're a great way to split up tasks among your team. I would still recommend rotating through those tasks so that everybody codes, everybody builds and there's no excuses for they weren't here so we didn't do anything. Uh, students can build their props, backdrops and costumes out of whatever materials you have to hand including recycled materials or Lego. You don't have to use Lego, it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, another way of giving additional numeracy practice is to have students create nets of the 3D shapes that they're creating rather than providing um, boxes. Word of warning, get costumes on robots before they start coding. It has to be your first prop that you're building. 
um, it has a real impact on the speed and maneuverability and being able to access the on off button, access batteries and things like that. Uh, this code here has been produced in Ed Scratch, which is an online coding uh, platform based on Scratch used for the little Orin Edison. It's very easy to learn, but you use whatever system is available for your robot. As they're creating their code though, they need to break it down into about 10 second spaces. Get robot A working, get robot B working, then get robot A and B working together. Um, and then carry on. If you code one robot for a whole minute, there's no guarantee it's actually going to work with the other one. So what you can also do to support students to take ownership is by using to do doing done lists alongside an engineering journal. So you start by creating the engineering together, one per team. Each day they should add in what they did, what they found challenging, reflect on what worked, did they get a lot of work done, did they not, why. Each person should do their own reflection. Again, we're putting that literacy in there, but it's about what they're doing. Spelling doesn't matter. It's about getting down their reflection and their learning. Everything that the team decides should go in the engineering journal. Each day, photos and screenshots of code should be added. They're making actually comment on the code as they go. What does it do? Which character is it for? What have they changed and why? Again, reflection, literacy. And then at the beginning of the project, um, you start a list together of everything that needs to be done. The idea is that each task takes one hour or less, and it should go on a post-it note. If a task is going to take longer than that, break it down into other parts. So coding the robot is going to take more than an hour. So it might be code robot A 10 seconds, code robot B 10 seconds, etc, etc. Um, students will often need help and they overestimate how well they're going to do stuff. So then when you meet together, each student can take a tag, um, a post-it note of the work they're going to do. And when they're done, they add their name to it. This allows you to track who is doing what and who is not doing anything. Uh, you can also add a I need help space in your classroom where students can place the task and the name of the person and then another team could help them out, someone in their team. Or um, you, and that way you're not getting a million help, 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 help. <laughs> um, so again, there's another layer of literacy in this section. Some tips and tricks for uh, RoboCup Junior. Paint the base quite early on, and I'd use spray paint. It stays on much better. Uh, because depending on your robot, it can cause some coding issues. Uh, that extra piece of friction, basically. Um, as I said earlier, put costumes on the robots ASAP because it does cause issues with the weight, power, and balance. Uh, and obviously being able to access things like play buttons, on and off buttons, and the batteries. Um, and as I mentioned earlier as well, rotate those jobs so that everyone can gain the skills and the team doesn't stand still if someone is away. So, as you can see, RoboCup Junior Theatre can support your literacy, numeracy and local curriculum aims. The great thing is that this can be pitched at different age groups, so it can be extended for high school students and incorporate drama and digital technology in CEA standards, as well as being accessed by younger primary students. It probably wouldn't go any lower than seven-year-olds, though. Uh, in addition to the soft skills, um, that in addition, sorry, the soft skills that are required, acquired by students uh, during this uh, program uh, can actually run through into your classroom. So teamwork, negotiation, accountability, independence, project management skills. As we mentioned, a local curriculum and that theme and the stories that are being told, they can be told in Toreo, they do not need to be told in English. Uh, with numeracy, we've got measurement and shapes, angles, conversion of uh, different units. We've got the use of decimals, estimation, all of those things. With our literacy, we're reading local stories, writing narrative stories, writing script, procedural writing, writing pseudocode, daily, weekly reflections. You can see there is a lot in there. And lots of this can then be used as evidence in other classes if you're at a high school level. Um, but at a primary level, obviously, you've got that whole curriculum, cross-curriculum scope right there. Well, I hope that you're encouraged to give RoboCap Junior Theatre a go. And if you'd like to discuss it further or get some help or bounce ideas, just drop me an email. That's my email up on the screen, jessica at ministryofinspiration.org. Thank you.